Hey there, Miss Players. Keith here at Slight Miss Play. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite D&D role-playing game accessories, flat plastic minis. I call these FPMs. You should too if you want the joy of having that constant text conversation that goes like, I need to get my FPMs ready for tomorrow night's session. What's an FPM? Flat plastic minis. Ah. So what are these things and why are they so awesome? FPMs are these flat, clear plastic minis printed with full color art that fit into little plastic bases. Basically 2D full color RPG minis. The art on these speaks for itself. I love it. Semi-realistic style, great colors and poses. Do I have a crush on a couple of these little ladies? Wait, what? Anyways, double-sided art, front and back, full color right out of the box. Because painting is time consuming. We've all got a backlog of unpainted or half painted minis and I like being able to pull something out full color whenever I need it. These are a fairly consistent art style throughout. I mean I still let my players use whatever weird or unpainted mini they want. I'm not a bloody savage but I don't really like having unpainted and half painted minis messing up my table aesthetic. I'm weird like that. Of course I still use some of my own painted minis when I have something to fit the occasion. Use any tool in your box guys. But everything plays fine together. I mean come on it's a game right? These little guys look amazing with Dwarven Forge also and on battle maps. Though if you're photographing them or streaming them, remember that the plastic can give you some J.J. Abrams style lens flare as the lights bounce off the clear plastic. The other thing about it is you have to be cautious of your angles when you are photographing them. So if you're using them for streaming or if you're using them on a, a YouTube channel like this or any, you know, if you're just taking pictures for a diorama or for Instagram or anything like that, you do want to be conscious that you're not shooting them from the top or from directly from the side because they are 2D, so they're invisible, like those guys, I think, from Wheel of Time, maybe? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, so they pretty much disappear when you go sideways or top down, so be aware of that while you're photographing them. But they're great, and I have a lot of them. Nobody ever has the one mini they want or need, but I can come pretty darn close with the amount that I have of these. They're pretty versatile selections. They have lots of sets available online. Also, these are super portable. These little binders, I have four of them. I can fit them into my backpack of holding without too much fuss and I have everything I need. Compared to getting random packs of WizKid minis with okay paint jobs or bulk quantities of Reaper Bones or other unpainted minis that you then have to, you know, paint. I think you come out way ahead in terms of price and value with the flat plastic minis. You do need to keep them organized. I've gone through many, many solutions, many solutions for this. Binders, trapper keepers, CCG card holders, business card holders, they tend to be all very slippy slip. The minis, I'd turn a page or put the binder down. Some of these guys would just fly out onto the floor. It's annoying. They can be hard to find because a lot of the plastic is clear. So I think I have all of mine back, but I'm not sure because Arknight, the producer of these, doesn't put full lists of what minis you're supposed to have on their site, which is a little bit annoying. They do have them on their online tokens. You can get kind of a list and kind of names of them, but they don't have those available for all of them. We'll get to that in a little bit. I would say grab some of these little mini flex folios from either Arknight's site or you can find them on Amazon. They're better than a Trapper Keeper in this one instance. This is the one time where anything is better than a Trapper Keeper. I mean, come on. But these are great because the pages are textured. They're not as slippy slip. So the guys don't fling around. They're sideways based. So the guys don't fly out through the top when you just set this down. They come with a super duper nice elastic little strap here to keep things nice and tight in there. Also, they're smaller overall. They make a better use of space. And again, we're back to the real estate game where you can keep more of your stuff, have it organized and have it take up a, follow, a smaller a smaller footprint. Faller footprint? A faller footprint. I spent an entire weekend reorganizing everything into four of these. I think I have about a thousand of these guys and it, it was worth it. I'm, I mean, I'm crazy, but it was worth it. Some people use Plano boxes or individual bags for this. That, that hurts my soul to think about just sorting through all of them, you know, not being able to see everything because they're pretty and I want to be able to just see easily what's in front of me so it can inspire me for my games and so my players can get inspired because what I do in my house, and this is my house, I have all my PCs or the miniatures that I think are best for PCs in their own binder. So I can hand this out to players at the beginning of a campaign or if they forget their mini and they can choose from it and they can choose, you know, whichever one looks cool. You know, I'm not going to put up a fuss about, you know, oh, that's not technically that, whatever. It's their character. They should have something cool that, that speaks to them. I've also got binders for traditional monsters like goblins, wargs, orcs, ogres, giants, kobolds, lizard folks, Ahogan, Kuatoa, Arak, 
Cockra, centaurs, drow, spiders, dragons, mythical beasts, other classic D&D monsters like beholders that aren't called beholders, I think technically because that's a D&D copyrighted thing, but whatever, we know what they are. I've got another one for my undead, my cultists, my demons, my elementals, my Cthulhu stuff, as well as some modern and miscellaneous items that are just kind of thrown in in some of the sets. Also, I've got my NPCs, my humans, my elves, nobles, guards, objects, sceneries, pirates, dancers, beasts, vermin, dinosaurs, familiars, and sea creatures. That, those are the categories I came up with. That's how I do this. You do you, but after about five or six revs, this was the best solution that I had. So do yourself a favor also, if you are organizing these guys and you have a bunch of them, leave yourself a little buffer space at the end of each section because you're gonna forget one and then you're gonna have to redo all of them. Just a little tip if you're as crazy as I am and wanna keep things organized. Cause the whole thing is you wanna spend the time out of game so that when you're at the table, you wanna be able to just quickly whip out some of these guys that are gonna be appropriate for your sex session. So when I prep my session, I take some small bags, I put all my group's PCs into one bag, I set up a couple other bags for different encounters that we might use that night. They all go into a little index card sized file and into my backpack of holding. If I need something else I hadn't planned on during the session, I can just dive into one of the books again. I don't need to carry a stack of Plano boxes or even bags of tokens when I play at a friend's house. Oh, but do remember to bring a bag of bases with you. Bases, bases. What are you gonna stick these guys into? Well, you've got clear bases as your default. They're simple, they're classy. It's easy to see any kind of terrain or map underneath them that way. You can get different colored bases to indicate heroes, NPCs, big bads, or to indicate different hit point levels. They have all different colors, different size bases for your large, huge, ridiculously ginormous monsters, flying bases at different heights. So anyone can fly now. You just take your mini, they ca somebody casts a fly spell or they have a magic item that lets them fly. You just pop them into a little standy base of different heights and suddenly they can fly. Takes a couple seconds, but now you're flying. So well done. You know what I wish they did have that I haven't seen yet is translucent colored bases. I don't even know why I want these, but if for some reason I want these. So Arknight, if you're listening, translucent colored bases. Yeah. Plastic pieces fit into the bases pretty easily, but they do seem to go in easier one way th than the other. So it's kind of like trying to, ooh, I got it first time that time, but most of the time it's like trying to plug in a USB cable for the first time, which we all know is physically impossible in this universe. It's just, it just doesn't work. You do want to be gentle with these bonds this time, please. It's only plastic. They can bend, they can rip. Sometimes they don't even peel out of the pages. They come in quite evenly. You need to be careful with that. If this little piece right here bends or tears or rips or gets cut off somehow, you're kind of useless unless you want to jerry-rig something with, I don't know, maybe scotch tape or something, if that would work. Another thing about these bases is that if you really want to terrify your party, <laughs> You can ask them to do you a favor and help you set up your game and you can just give them a crap ton of monsters and a crap ton of bases and say, hey, could you do me a favor? Could you just set these guys up for later tonight? And it scares the hell out of them. I'm, I'm such a jerk. Back to bases. Arknight did just finish a Kickstarter. I think you can still get in on this at the time of this uh, shooting for acrylic mounts as bases. Uh, horses, dragons, bats, uh, 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 cows, griffins, alligators, frogs, turtles, unicorns, flying brooms, big cats, elephants, rhinos, all kinds of stuff. That's just the stuff I remember. I'm sure people will love these. The art's nice. It's a little bit simplistic compared to these FPMs themselves. Also, I hate mounts. Um, so I'm not sure if this is number one for me. I, I kill horses, all the horses. I will say this, the concept here is great because if your party rents a bunch of horses, you don't have to get all new minis for them. They look nothing like what, what their main mini would look like. And you only have a few of these mounted horse characters in here. There's only, I think a couple of, there's only a couple of them that are actually on horseback. That that's kind of a limiting factor. Just like if you were to have a regular mini, I guess, you you know, you don't always have a, a horse for it. So this is a nice solution for that. Yeah, I kill horses. So this is why. The party has a bunch of horses. We don't have a lot of horse minis or the right ones for the different characters. So we pretend we're all gonna remember that they're on horseback when the zombies attack them or the wolves or the wolf zombies. Ooh, wolf zombies, I gotta write that down. We don't have minis for the horses. So once we roll initiative, we get excited and hacky hack and stabby stab and eldritch blast bluey. And we all just forget that the horses even exist. And until after the combat and then someone remembers, damn it. And now we have to pretend that the horses just scatter during combat and are easily retrieved by the characters once combat's done. So we keep the verisimilitude, but don't drag the game down too much. Yes, I am actually complaining right now about pretending in a game that is literally about pretending. Shut up. So if we did have these 
acrylic mounts, it would just take five seconds to pop the minis on the horse, keep the same minis, pop them off, the characters dismount, you still have the horses, and the, then you can have the horses run away or get eaten by zombies. So maybe I wouldn't get annoyed with horses all the time, and I wouldn't have to kill them. I mean, I still would, but I wouldn't have to. So the bad stuff about these, there's not a ton of some of the weirdo kind of character classes that we all know modern D&D players want. You know, they want to run around like a band of circus freaks and not stick to core races. So there's not a lot of those, but there's a there's a few in different sets. I've also had a couple of minis over the past few years that have had their art just kind of wash off or scrape off. And of course, those are ones that I've been using consistently, like the one I use for Strahd or the one I use for a player character. <laughs> so we had to like just draw on a little smiley face on it for a little time. And I have no idea how that happened. It did suck. I did have to buy them all over again because I, I, I'm crazy. I had to have them again. It's just a drag. I didn't even know that kind of thing could happen, but I hope it doesn't happen again. But overall, these are phenomenal. It'll cost a bundle to get a collection as big as mine. I've been collecting these for years since I started playing 5e, like when it first came out, I think. But... If you're just getting into D&D, there are some sets that are available that can get you right in. They just did a Kickstarter for the Hardbound support set, which I believe ties into the Lost Minds of Fendelver, Flandelver, Flan, something about Flan, something about Flan. I'm gonna write that one down too. They also have one that is a curated DM set that was curated actually by uh, Sly Flourish, uh, Mike Shea. I haven't actually seen this. I've seen some of the minis that are in it. I think I have most of them in other sets, so I didn't get that. If it had been out while I was initially going into this, I probably still would have gone overboard and gotten all this stuff, but there are some good entry points, so I would check that one out. Some, but not all, of the FPMs are available as digital packages on Roll20. Did it suck that I had to rebuy these online? Yeah. Did I do it? Yes, because I could keep things consistent after COVID hit and I brought my games online. That was a nice thing. I could have that kind of consistency and flow. Everybody knew who everybody else was. We had to replace some of the 3D minis with some of the FPM tokens, the Arknight tokens on Roll20, but overall, you know, my, my villains were all there, most of the characters were there, all the NPCs were there, so it was great. Do I wish that all of the sets would be available on Roll20? Well, what I really wish is that people would wear their freaking masks and stay home and, we, you know, we can all be vaccinated. There's no future strains and this whole pandemic is behind us, but barring that, yeah, I'd probably rebuy a lot of my collection on Roll20, and I have a lot. You listening, Arknight? If you're a player and you don't DM, you probably don't need these. You could probably just spend your money on a Hero Forge mini and paint it up or get a pre-painted one. Uh, it's one mini. Painted always beats unpainted on a dance fight. If you're a DM who doesn't have time to paint the minis you want to use, if you're picky about that sort of thing and you like having the perfect mini on hand for each session, if you travel to DM and you like the versatility and the portability that these offer, I highly recommend these. So again, these are flat plastic minis. They're by Arknight. It's arknight.com. You can check them out. They have a couple of Kickstarters as well that I think you can still get in on the pre-order phase on. They've also got some other products on their site like maps and spell templates that aren't really my thing. I don't really have a lot of use for them, but I'm I'm sure people do and will. They have sets for superheroes as well. They have sets for, I think, futuristic and horror games. So they've got a wide variety of items. I definitely recommend checking these guys out. I use these absolutely every session. I think they're, they're just great. That's my take on Arknight Flat Plastic Minis. Again, this is Keith from Slight Misplay. You can find me on Twitter at Slight Misplay. I'm now on Instagram as well, also at Slight Misplay. You can find me on Twitch TV slash Slight Misplay, where I've been doing some streaming on painting. If you'd like to help me out and get these videos up to a better quality and help me get more of these out there to you, I'd really appreciate it if you check out my Patreon or my Ko-Fi coffee, Ko-Fi, Ko-Fi page. I'm trying to think of anywhere else that I'm out there. I think that's everything. So I hope you guys had a great new year. I hope this review was helpful. Please feel free to leave me a comment or ask me a question about anything either on Twitter or um, on the uh, little comment comment section below. That's all for now. Onward.